you know, hopes were closer to any kind of deal with China, certainly working their magic on the markets. The Dow has jumped 500 points over just the last two sessions. First on the report yesterday that the U.S. would remove tariffs, and then, of course, on today's news, which Edward just brought you, as markets price in at least getting closer to a trade deal, here's the golden rule, according to investor and contributor to Fox Business, Gary Kalpom, number one, it's not the news or the headlines, it's how markets react to the news. How should our investors, how should you guys, viewers, how should you react to the headlines? Especially when immediately we ask our traders, uh, the White House comes out and denies it, as they did yesterday, for example. Uh, Tim Anderson, uh, guide our viewers right now, because some of this is, is being shot down immediately by one side or another. Yes, but... The, I believe the original headline was that it was something they were talking about. I'm sure they talk about a lot of things, especially if the president goes into a meeting and says, give me all your options. They could be talking about 10 or 15 different scenarios. I think all investors should just proceed with caution as soon as they see headlines and try to determine where those headlines are coming from and also realize that the, all of the algorithms that are in the market have headline reading systems in them mm -hmm. that are going to react much faster than you or I are. Phil, uh, I would agree with what Tim says, especially considering you've got um, artificial intelligence now and the algos can read certain headlines and then make decisions based on that. But that could work against them, could it not? You know, if, if a U.S. investor who actually is human and has a brain says, you know, I don't think so, and they hold off, they're not caught when the herd reverses. That's absolutely true. You know, that's why, you know, there was an old saying in the business here, when you trade the headlines, you're going to end up selling newspapers at some point, you know, because... <laughs> hey, I delivered the, newspapers. Hey, there's nothing wrong with it. I love it. That's, you know, I may go back to it. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, uh, yeah, you know, but this is a headline-driven market right now. And, and what I think the best thing you can do as an investor right now, if, if you're a trader, not an investor, if you're a trader, is to anticipate there are going to be headlines that so they're going to drive the market. And we kind of know that something's going to come out of, of, of the White House or something's going to come out of China that's either going to make the market move up big or move down down big. And, and if you look at that, you look at some of the moves that we've seen, some of the swings, they go right up to resistance. They stop and they go back down yeah. or they go right down to support. So that will give you opportunities if you're patient. A lot of times you can fade the head, headlines and make money. Yeah, it's about making money, Chris, and uh, it, what, you've got to be able to distill this information. For example, when it comes to oil, oil spiking in the aftermarket right now, I just looked up three and about a half percent. It closed uh, earlier in the session uh, up about three percent, but it's still climbing. We've got this rig count number where it's the biggest drop in idling of the, the rigs in quite some time. Um, you know, these are the kinds of things that you actually have to distill and make decisions on. Yeah, and the thing is, you have to have the plan in place if you're going to be a trader. You know, traders are different than investors. Investors are like Warren Buffett. They buy it, they'll hold it forever. Mm -hmm. If you're a trader, depending on your time frame, you've got to be, you have to have uh, strongly held opinions, but you've got to be able to cut them loose immediately. And it's just difficult for most people to do. But um, the crude, crude oil market now, it's very technical. A lot of people are looking at 55, then 60 as upside targets. And uh, the thing mm -hmm. is, when we get there, it'll be a positive uh Headline, and then that's when you actually want to be selling into that, when it hits the headlines. Just like Christmas, the day after Christmas, when the world was coming to an end, that was actually the best time to buy the S&P. We've rallied 15% from that low. That's almost 1% a day. Now, you know, are we going to continue to have that type of growth the rest right, of the year? Right. No. So traders are actually selling this S&P rally right now. And investors, I think, uh, you have to separate yourself. Are you a trader or are you an investor? <laughs> That's the hardest thing, isn't it, Phil? You know, when you, you look at it and you say, oh, it's going up 2%, it might go up another percent. They don't, right, they don't right. tend to sell into a rally. It's very hard to do, and it's that uh, uh, fear of missing out, FOMO, right? You know, it's like, oh, my gosh, this thing's really taken off. You have a tendency to want to jump, and a lot of times that's when you want to take profits. You know, a lot of times when I'm in a good position, when I really start feeling good about myself and say, hey, this thing, I'm really smart, that's the time to get out <laughs> because the market's going to take it away from me. But, you know, you talked about that rig count real quick. I, I think that's a, a, a big sign, the biggest drop in three years of concern. 21. That, that they idled shot. 21 of them. 
Yeah, and, and I think, you know, there's a lag time with these rigs. You know, we've all been touting, oh, look at record U.S. production. Isn't that wonderful? you got to remember, the rigs that created that production came in when the price of oil was at, you know, $60, $70. Yeah, yeah. Now we're seeing, you know, the, the lag time, we're seeing the pullback in that investment, and that means a pullback okay. in production.